All right, gamers, today it's time to go looking for treasure in Tobago. Let's check it out. So in this game, you are going to be one of four different colors, the green player, blue player, red, or yellow player. You're going to get a little Jeep that has already pre-painted on there, a little wooden Jeep. These are really great quality pieces. And you're going to have, you're going to put them on this map. You get to decide where the starting area is. Now one thing about this map, it is divided into three different pieces that are completely reversible. So you can have several different combinations of what the island is going to look like. So the island will always be different every time you play. All right, so that's one thing. The second thing you want to do in setup is you're going to want to put out uh, huts, and you'll just put them out randomly around the board. You want to put out these palm trees, which look really nice, and they're made of wood, so they're very sturdy. And then, of course, you want to put out these little Easter Island statues. And folks, these feel like rock. They're not made of rock, it's a little lighter substance, but it feels grainy like granite and rock, and I love the quality of these pieces. So you're putting them and you're facing them different ways. However you uh, want to set them up, that's how you'll do it. Uh, directional cards will go right here. In a four-player game, each player gets four of those to start off with. If it's a two-player game, they're going to get six cards each. Now, over here are some treasure cards, which I'll get to in a moment, and down over there are some amulet cards, which I'll talk about later as well. And what you're trying to do in this game is you're trying to find one of four treasures. You have the black treasure, the brown treasure, the gray treasure, and the white treasure. And what you're going to be doing with your clue cards is you're going to be laying them down on the certain treasures and revealing where the treasure is or is not. You're kind of revealing the location. Now, once you play one of these, you do want to put your little player token down on them. Let's say red played there, green played that one, blue played that one, and yellow played that one. Now, once you play one, you would, of course, draw up to the next one as well. And what these cards are indicating is where the treasure is located, giving you a sense of where it's not. Okay, And if you can't understand some of the icons, they're all explained easily in the book. But just to give you an example, here on the white treasure we have a picture of a seashell, which tells me it is definitely on one of these beach tiles on my board. Okay, that's where the white treasure is, somewhere on a beach. And then I have gray here. It says it is not in the biggest forest. Well, you see, I got two forests here. This one has six tiles. This one's seven tiles big. So now I know gray is not in that big forest. That's not saying that gray is in the small forest. All it says is that gray is not in that big forest. So I know not to look there for gray. As for brown, it says it is not located on a beach token. So unlike uh, white that is located on the beach, brown is not located on the beach. So I don't have to look for brown on the beaches there. And then black says, hey, it is not on a lake space. So my two lake spaces here, I know that black is not on that. Now you don't have to play them evenly like this. You could play um, on the same one or as many as you want, but it's got to clearly define or give more definition to where that treasure is or isn't. So for instance, let's say red player had this one. All right, now this one says that the treasure is, we know it's not on a lake if it's black. Let's say it plays this on black. We know it's not on a lake, but it says it's not even beside water. So it is not even beside water. And Red played that one, so he's going to put his marker on it. So now I know that not only is it not on one of these ocean tiles, but it is not near anywhere touching water. Well, that really boils it down, doesn't it, for us? So now we know it's completely inland. Okay, that's a good clue. But let's say green comes around and they play another one on it. And we say, hey, it is definitely in a forest. And that's what green says. So green plays a card down there. Okay, now we're getting tricky here. So, where's a green a forest spot that is not touching water? Well, there's only three on the board, and this is when you're going to bring out these cubes when you can uh, narrow down where the treasure is. So that means it, it could be here, here, or here. Those are the three spaces where it could be. Now, we still don't know where it is, so we have to give out more clues. So, let's say the next player tries to play this card. They cannot play it on black. Why? Because we've already established that black is in a forest. 
This is in the grassland, which you can't play there. You could play it somewhere else, like for instance on brown. Brown's not on the beach, but we're going to say in one of these grassy areas. Okay, so then the next player goes, and let's say it's yellow's turn, and they say, aha, it is one space away from a hut. It is next to a hut. Okay, and they're going to play this on black. They're going to put their little marker there. So now, what space is next to a hut? Well, not this one. This one doesn't have a hut, so that removes that option. And then here, this one's on a hut, so that one's not it either. So that is where the treasure is. Well, now it is located, and now it is a mad dash to get to that area to get that black treasure. And how you move, you're, 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 you have three movement uh, actions here with your Jeep. Movement actions are from one terrain to the next, or driving onto that terrain as many spaces as allowed. So for instance, I could do one turn like that. This would be my second turn. For three, I could drive all the way down here, and, for, and that would be my actions there. So if Red's starting here, it would take him one action, two action, and then a third action to go all the way there, but oh, he'd just miss it. Now Yellow could get to it, if he could. One, two, and Yellow's there. So Yellow's going to put another token down right here, claiming that he was the one that found it. Now the game isn't over right now. Now you've got to divide up the treasures. What you're going to do is you're going to let people see certain amount of treasure cards as they gave clues or found the treasure. So for instance, Yellow and Red would get to pick up two of these treasure cards and look at them. So Red looks at these. Ah, one's a five coin, one's a two coin. Uh, yellow looks at two. And they go, ah, one's a three and one's a four. And then green only gets to look at one treasure card and says, oh, one's a four. And then you take, ah, a secret treasure card that no one's seen and you shuffle them up. And whoops, you shuffle them off all face down, not face up. So you would shuffle them. Now, these players, like red, only knows what two of those cards were, as does yellow. And green only knows what one of the cards were. And so what you're going to do is put the treasure chest down right here, and you're going to reveal the first card. It's a four. And they say, yellow, do you want it? No. Well, then they're going to ask yellow again, do you want it? He's going to say no. It goes to green. Green's like, I don't know, that looks better than the one I had. And green takes it. So now green takes the card, and he is off the board. Then it goes to yellow again. This is a three. Yellow doesn't want it. Uh, yellow doesn't want it again. Goes to red. He doesn't want it. Second time he declines it. In that case, this card is out of the game. Now it goes to the next card. It's a two. They all decline except for red because he knows, oh man, there's only a few cards left. I better get this or I'm going to get nothing out of this. So then it goes to the next one. Yellow says five. I'll take that one. Yellow's still up in first though because they played that card. Next one's a two. Yellow says no. Red says, argh, I really should have taken that four earlier. And, or I should, should have taken that three earlier. And then yellow gets the last one, which is a four. And so that's how you kind of divvy up the treasures. Now this goes away, and of course the black treasure is no more. You're looking for the last three treasures. But that's not all, because when a treasure is found, something really magical happens on this island. What these little Easter Island thing uh, statues are going to do is wherever they're pointing toward the sea, that is where they're going to reveal one of these amulets. So for instance, this guy's turned this way, he has to face right here, there's the end, edge of the sea. This guy's facing this way, there's the edge of the sea. This guy's fish, facing that way, there's the edge of the sea. And now it's also a race to see which vehicle can make it to one of these spots. So green is right there, one, two, and they can pick one up. Now what can you do with an amulet. Well, there's a few things you can do. One, you can exchange this in, discard all of your location cards, and draw four more if you want to. Because sometimes you're trying to manipulate those cards to where the treasure is right next to your Jeep because you don't want to drive all the way on the other side of the island. But you may not have the proper uh, location card to do so. So you may want to exchange one of these in and get four new location cards. Or you can cash this in and get more movement. You can get a plus one in movement. So you can move four instead of three, and that may be handy. Also in the game, you either have a choice. You, you can either play a clue card or move. So moving is one of the other actions you can do. But the last thing that an amulet does it protects you from curse cards. Now this is very cool. In the treasure deck there are these cards and they are curse cards. And if you draw a curse card, it goes like let's say this was the uh, round again like I had all the, you know, yellow, yellow, red, green. Let's pretend they had their cards back on there. 
If it gets revealed, the first one in order has to take the curse card. In that case, yellow would have been cursed. And what would that would have meant is yellow would have had to give up their most valued treasure. So this five they had earlier in the game, they would have to give that up. So being cursed isn't cool, but if you have an amulet, you can use it to avoid being cursed. One additional note, after uh, the statues have uh, brought out amulets, you would turn each one 60 degrees on the board and they would face a different direction. Now the end of the game happens when all four treasures are discovered and the person with the most gold coins at the end of the game wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, folks, uh, when I was at BGGCon, I had made it through my entire list of games I wanted to play and I was super happy. It was the last day and, or the last night and I was walking around the game floor just to see what everyone else was playing and I saw this game on someone's table and I was like, Oh, that looks interesting. So I took a picture of the cover and the next morning, sure enough, I saw they checked it back in. I said, well, let's try it out. So I brought it out, I looked at the pieces and I instantly said, oh, I'm going to love this game. And then I started reading the rules and then I thought, oh, I'm going to hate this game. It did not sound that fun. But by then my nephews were all gung-ho, let's play this. And so we did. And at the end of it, I was like, whoa, this is a great game game. The board is, like I said, totally reversible, three different sides. So you, the island will always look different no matter how you flip it. Uh, it is just just ingenious how they, how they did this, where you, uh, the treasure is almost where you determine if you play the right cards. Grabbing those amulets is also good because you can cash those in to get the treasure uh, faster. Sometimes you want to move instead of play a treasure because you think you can get rid of it. If you're down to like just a few um, uh, cubes left and you can eliminate one with that amulet, there is tons of strategies when amulets come into play. So after the first treasure is found, it just gets you know wackier and crazier each treasure you're trying to find. It is just so much fun. I net This one surprised me. It really did. It was nowhere on my radar when I went to the con and it barely made, like I said, the last, this is one of the last games I played at BGG Con with no intention of getting it until you know, even after reading the rules I thought mm -mm, I'm, uh, we'll play this and then I'll kind of put it up and never talk about it again. But what a great game and it's Rio Grande which even though it's out of print it's sad because I do like Rio Grande as a publisher so I'm glad I have another one of their games. Unfortunately this one's out of print but folks it is a great game. It may cost a little bit Hopefully they'll go into a reprint. If it does go into a reprint, it is definitely, definitely worth your time. All right, gamers, that is all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on.